welcome to my channel. Today I want to share with you guys my recipe for sofrito, which is a fantastic way to use up a lot of different ingredients that you harvest out of your garden. If you have a parent of Latin American descent, I'm pretty sure the very first recipe they ever showed you how to cook was sofrito. This can vary depending on what country you're from. So I'm just going to show you like the absolute most basic ingredients. And of course you can change things up according to what you might have growing in your garden at the time. After we make this sofrito, I'm also going to show you two ways to use it. One is making a very simple sofrito marinated baked chicken. And the other is my personal top secret recipe for a sausage, corn, and bean rice. Both of those recipes use up a ton of sofrito to give a lot of additional flavor. All right, so to begin, let's talk about the essential top basic ingredients that you need for sofrito. Traditionally, sofrito has onions, peppers, garlic, and tomatoes, along with cilantro or some other types of herbs, depending on what you like. I harvested a ton of onions from my garden this year, so it's a great way to use up some of that harvest. I went ahead and gathered whatever peppers I had ready for harvest right now in my garden, so I have lots of different kinds here. But traditionally, the way that people from the Caribbean make sofrito is actually using a pepper called ají cachuca. It is classified as a sweet pepper, but it has a tiny amount of some heat to it, but it's pretty low because I don't like super spicy stuff and I don't even notice it. But the reason why this is the pepper that's traditionally used for sofrito is because it's a pepper that grows well in very hot tropical climates like the Caribbean. So it's quite common in our countries, but you can use whatever sweet peppers you prefer, green bell peppers, red, you know, anything you want. If you want it to be spicy, just add whatever hot peppers you prefer. And then for garlic, you want to use like fresh whole peeled garlic. So I have a bunch of that right here. And then for the tomatoes, whatever tomatoes you would like, this is what I had here in my garden today. So that's what I harvested. As far as the herbs, the most commonly added herb to sofrito is by far cilantro, but I know a lot of people don't like cilantro or maybe it gives you like a soapy type of flavor when you eat it. So in that case, you can try some alternatives like culantro or papalo, which I have a video all about growing papalo as a cilantro substitute. If you would like to learn more about that plant, I'll link that video below in the description, but you need a lot of it. Whatever greeny type of herb that you choose to use in this recipe, you just need a lot. And of course you can add other herbs along with the cilantro if you want. Right now in my garden, I have tons of Cuban oregano growing. So a lot of people will ask me like, what do you do with all this Cuban oregano? It's a very big bushy type of plant. It grows very well in the heat. It's one of the few herbs that really can grow and thrive during a very hot Florida summer, but it's not exactly the same as, you know, traditional regular Italian oregano, which I also have right here. The Cuban oregano definitely has much more of a stronger flavor as compared to like a standard Italian oregano, but a great way to use up a lot of this is in like marinades and sofrito, things like that. It goes really well with meats like chicken and seafood. So since I have a lot of this Cuban oregano growing in my garden right now, I'm definitely going to be adding some into my sofrito. If you have regular oregano, that's fine too. If you don't have any of it, that's okay as well. Now, when you look at my recipe for this sofrito, which I will list that all out in the description below, all the ingredients and everything, I do not put quantities. Okay. I'm not going to say you need one cup of onions, half a cup of garlic, you know, whatever, because honestly, this recipe is mix whatever you have. You really can't go wrong with it. You're not adding salt to it. So it's not like you're going to accidentally make it too salty or something like that. It's just fresh vegetables. So you're going to blend up whatever you have, whatever's growing in your garden, whatever you found at the grocery store. It's fine. If let's say you didn't have any peppers, that's okay. You can still make sofrito without the peppers. I just wanted to go over the basics, like what we usually like to put in sofrito, but you know, some days you might not have something and that's okay. You can still make it. Sofrito can be seen like mirepoix, but like that's what Latin American people use instead of the French mirepoix where you like saute veggies in a pan before you start cooking like your recipes. We make sofrito. It's just blended up fresh vegetables. I do have a little secret ingredient that I like to add to my sofrito because this is what my mom taught me. She would get a couple cubes of like chicken bouillon. We don't add salt to our sofrito because when you're cooking with it, most likely you're going to add salt in that recipe anyways. So we kind of don't really season this that much, but she always added a cube or two of chicken bouillon and that's what I keep doing myself. So you can do that as well if you prefer or just leave it without it. When I make sofrito, I make a huge batch because I use this like in everything. It's the starter for about 90% of like Latin American type of dishes that we cook here at home. It's basically in everything. And it's so easy to make. You just gather up your ingredients, throw them all in the blender and blend them up until it's pretty smooth. So I'm just going to add some garlic. I'm just eyeballing it. If you like a lot of garlic, put a lot of garlic. If you're not a big fan of garlic, you can leave it out. 
out or just put a little bit. It's totally up to you. You don't really need to cut up any of the vegetables as well. Like the tomatoes, you can throw the whole thing in there whole, unless you have like a really big tomato that won't fit in the blender very well. If the tomato has like hard stem in the center or something, remove that out. You don't want that in the sofrito. And then we have the star of today's sofrito, and that's these ahi cachuca peppers. I already cut them up because I removed the seeds out and dry them to make them available on my website. So if you want to grow the same ones, you can find seeds on my website. And it is totally your preference. You can leave the entire pepper in there whole with the seeds and everything. I like to remove it because I just don't like that grittiness from the seeds like in my food and stuff like that. So I like to cut through my peppers and remove the seeds first before sticking them in the blender. I'm going to start blending some of this because this is already getting really full before I finish adding all of my ingredients. And that's just to kind of push it down a little bit so we have some space here and we can continue adding the rest. I'm going to take a couple leaves from this Cuban oregano. This stuff is really strong, so don't put a whole, whole bunch in here. For a big blender this size, I recommend like five leaves. And just because I have a bunch of it growing right now too, this is the regular Italian oregano. I'm just gonna put a little bit in here. But traditionally, the way my mom makes sofrito, we never put oregano in there of any sort. The only herb was cilantro, but you know, I have a bunch growing in my garden. It works great for this too, so why not? So my son here, Roland, and my faithful companion, Teddy here, also wanna help with making this recipe. So Roland, if you want, you can put about half of that cilantro into this blender, just stuff it in there, okay? About half of it. Yeah, that's good. The whole thing, the leaves and the stems. While he does that, I'm going to cut my onions just to get the papery skins off. And with the onions, you don't have to dice them up very small or anything like that. I just quarter them. That way they just fit into the blender. And then we're going to put two of these chicken bouillons. Here, you want to open that up and put a cube in there? Put two cubes in there for me. All right, thank you very much. I have a couple more peppers here that I just want to take the seeds out and we're going to add it in there too. Now we're going to just blend it all. So sometimes things get stuck at the top. They don't go all the way down to blend. You just get like a spatula or something and push it down and keep blending. It doesn't matter how much you blend it. You can't really overdo it. All right, so our sofrito is done. It's all nice and blended. I made a bunch because I'm gonna be using a lot of it today with between my two recipes, but most likely you're always gonna have some leftover sofrito and that is perfectly fine. You can freeze it. Oftentimes I put it in just some sandwich size Ziploc bags, put them in the freezer. And that way the next time I need some, I just put the entire like little frozen block of the sofrito in the pan. It'll melt and cook down. This sofrito turned out more of like an orange red color and that's because of the high amount of the red different kinds of peppers I was using. But typically when you find sofrito like at the grocery store, it tends to be a green color. And that really is attributed to the amount of cilantro and or like green peppers that are being used in the recipe. So it's okay if yours turns out orange or green, it's still sofrito. But anyways, let's get started with cooking our recipes. All right, so let's continue with making our two recipes. We have the chicken here. Let's get this marinating first. The longer that it marinates, the better. You can do this the night before if you want, or at minimum, I would let it marinate for about two hours before you cook it. So the first thing I'm gonna add is some oil. You can really use whatever oil you prefer. I'm using extra virgin olive oil, and that is to just help get everything marinating well, but it also helps the skin crisp up during the cooking process, or in my case, I'm gonna be baking it. You could also grill it if you want. And I'm just eyeballing this. I really don't use exact measurements when I'm cooking. A lot of ingredients really don't need to be measured. I mean, you just put as much as you like for the flavor that you like. I'm also gonna add some seasonings. This is called the Cuban blend. It's from Kinder's. I really love Kinder's seasonings, but if you can't find this one, you can use any kind of seasoning that has maybe like citrus or lime in it. Something like that would go really well with the sofrito. I like a lot of flavor, so I'm gonna make sure to add enough seasoning that both sides of the chicken is very well coated. And I am using bone-in and skin-on chicken thighs. I really feel like dark meat works better for recipes like this when marinating in sofrito, but you could use whatever meat you want. It's the same thing. If you wanna use pork chops, chicken breast, whatever. With chicken breast, I recommend you get like the bone-in and skin-on, just because that will really help conserve a lot of the juiciness and moisture when you cook with chicken breast, but hey, if you got boneless, skinless chicken breast, that's okay too. Just be a little careful on your cooking times. 
I'm expecting a lot of family over later today for game night. So I'm making a lot of this, but you can tailor this recipe to the quantity that's best for you. If you just want to make a couple pieces just for a meal for one or two people, that's totally fine too. All right, I'm also going to add a little bit of just regular white salt. And I'm just eyeballing this in here. After years and years of cooking, I kind of gauge like how much salt I like to put on things. If you don't want to add more salt, that's totally fine. We did put a couple of chicken bouillons in here, which has a little bit of saltiness to it as well, but just adjust to your liking. Lastly, we're going to drench this in our sofrito. And I got to make sure I've saved some for my rice recipe. And then just mix everything together. Once everything is nice and mixed, I'm just going to immediately put them into some foil pans. This is the same pans I'm going to bake them in. So might as well just put them in here while they're marinating so it's ready to go. All right, so I put some tin foil over the top of our two trays with the chicken. These are going to go in the fridge for at least two hours to marinate. Or if you do it the day before, you can let them marinate overnight even better. And then whatever remaining sofrito I had, I just packaged them up into some Ziploc bags in these portions like this because usually when I cook with sofrito, so I use a lot of it. So for me, this is a good portion. And then we just pop it into the freezer for next time. All right, so it's been about two hours. I'm gonna start cooking my chicken. So I set my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit to start preheating. While that gets going, we're gonna start working on our rice dish. I don't really have a name for this recipe. It's just something I kind of like invented with ingredients that I really like in rice, but we'll just simply call it sausage and corn, rice and beans. For this dish, you're gonna need rice. I really like jasmine rice. That's what I use, not long grain rice, which is typically what my family the Dominican Republic uses, but I really like the flavor and texture of jasmine rice better. So that's what I'm going to use. Then of course we have our sofrito that we just made. I have two cans of red kidney beans, but really you can use whatever beans you like. I feel like the red or even the dark red kidney beans go really well with all of these flavors, especially the sausage. So that's kind of my preference, but honestly you could use whatever beans you prefer. Then we're going to put a tiny bit of tomato paste. This just gives it like a deeper type of tomato tomato flavor. It goes really well with the sofrito, but it also adds a lot of color to the dish. So if you've noticed rice dishes that are kind of like yellow in color, it's probably because they put a little bit of tomato paste or anchote. It just depends. Then we're going to need some sausage. Again, you could use whatever sausage you like. I really like this one here. I'm not sponsored by anyone or nothing like that. I just really feel like the flavor of this goes well in this rice dish, but this is beef smoked sausage. Again, you could use whatever kind of sausage you like, but we're going to dice this up pretty small. Then I have two cans of whole sweet corn, whichever corn you like is totally fine. And I say two cans of each because I usually make a huge batch of this rice. And I really like my rice to have chunky bits of the meat, the corn, the beans, instead of there just being like a lot of rice and a little bit of these other ingredients in there. So I like to add like extra, extra amounts of the corn sausage and the beans so that my rice is really full of them. And the last couple ingredients, you're going to need a little bit of some olive oil or whatever whatever cooking oil you prefer. But I also add a stick of butter to this recipe. This ingredient was added due to my American side of my heritage. So my mom's from the Dominican Republic, but my dad is American. He's from Pennsylvania. So I definitely cook with like a big fusion of just different ingredients and things. I would say the majority of Hispanic or Latin American people do not put butter in their rice, but I really like the flavor. I just think it helps give it a really nice buttery flavor, especially with the sausage. So if you're Hispanic or Latin American, don't chew me out for adding butter to my rice. Before we get started cooking all of this stuff, I do want to discuss how rice actually cooks. A lot of people will put rice in a pot with boiling water. Rice does not cook via boiling. It is a steamed type of product or ingredient. So you're going to steam it gently in your nice big pot, not boil the heck out of it. That's how you get mushy rice. Another thing that's going to differ a little bit between my Hispanic side of my heritage is that when we make rice and stuff like this, they use a big caldero, which means cauldron, an actual big metal cauldron type of pot that has no type of like nonstick coating on it whatsoever. So when you cook the rice, it tends to form a burnt crust where it comes in contact with the sides of the caldero. A lot of people actually love eating that burnt crispy rice. We call it con con. It's almost like a delicacy. No Dominican will ever throw their con con away. They all eat it, except for me. I do not like it. I've never liked it before. 
That's just how I am. So I don't like to cook my rice in a caldero, which is the very traditional, typical way of doing it. I like to use a pot that has a nice nonstick coating. That way I also don't waste any of my rice because it doesn't form a layer of like burnt or crispy rice on there. It pretty much all of it, every single piece of rice is perfectly cooked and edible. So my preference is to cook it in a nice big pot with some kind of a nonstick coating or porcelain coating, something like that. So let's put this pot on the heat. For now, I'm gonna put it on high heat, but as soon as we add the rice, we're gonna reduce that heat way, way down because again, we just want it to steam cook, not to boil cook. So put this on high and we're gonna add our whole stick of butter. As you can see, I have a pretty big pot here because again, I'm making a lot of this. So one big stick of butter for a pot this size of rice is good. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of my olive oil or whatever oil you wanna use. I find that when you add a little bit of oil, it just helps the sofrito really crisp and cook up a little bit better. So I probably added about three or four tablespoons of olive oil into here. Again, measurements are not that important with these things. It's all gonna work out in the end. And then we're gonna add about half of that bag of sofrito. This is probably a good solid one cup of sofrito with our one stick of butter and about three or four tablespoons of olive oil. We're gonna let this all melt together and start cooking the sofrito. While that's getting started cooking, we're gonna start dicing up our sausage. Slice that in half lengthwise and then dice it. This is about the size you want with the dice of your sausage. All right, so now all of the butter is melted. Our sofrito is getting fried up in the oil and the butter. Now it's time to add the sausage. All right, so after we add the sausage, we're just gonna cook this on high just to get everything really nice and hot and start crisping up before we add in the rest of our ingredients. So it's been cooking for about five minutes. You can see that the edges of the sausage have started like crisping up and curling in. So they're starting to brown up and release all of their juices. So next we're gonna add the two cans of fresh whole sweet corn and I include the juice that's in here because that gives a lot of flavor. And then we're gonna add the two cans of the beans. Make sure you drain the liquid out of the can of beans. All right, so the last thing we're gonna add to this is about half of one of these six ounce cans of tomato paste. Again, that just gives it like a depth of flavor and also helps give the rice some color. The other remaining half in here, I also like to put this in a Ziploc bag and just freeze it for next time. Mix up all of these ingredients really well before we add in our rice. Also, before I forget, we're gonna add two more chicken bouillon cubes and that is just to make sure that it has good flavor as well. Cook for about five minutes so that way the chicken bouillon cubes dissolve before we start adding our rice. After five minutes we're gonna add a little bit of water so this rice has some more liquid to cook in. It already has some liquid from the can of sweet corn juice and the sofrito even but we're just gonna add a little bit more because otherwise the liquid that's in here is kind of pretty thick and won't help the rice steam cook properly. Again I don't measure how how much water, just add a little bit more so it's just a slightly more liquidy. While this cooks down for a little bit, we're gonna add our chicken into the oven now that it's come up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna cook it covered with the tin foil for about 45 minutes. And then we're gonna take the cover off and continue cooking them until the skin is nice and crispy and brown. That could take an additional maybe 10 to 20 minutes. Just depends on your oven and your chicken. And I always like to set timers because trust me, I will forget. So I set it for 45 minutes. That way I check up on the chicken and remove the tin foil. Before we add our rice, we have to make sure that our liquid in here has a very good flavor, even slightly over salty, because the rice is gonna absorb so much flavor and it's a bland type of ingredient. If this doesn't have a lot of like extra seasoning to begin with, then your rice is gonna turn out pretty bland. So let's just taste a little bit of this. And this already has fantastic flavor. But the trick is you want this to be slightly over salty on purpose. So if you identify that it needs a little bit more salt, you can add some more regular, you know, white tables salt, or you can sprinkle in small amounts of the powdered chicken bouillon. So that way you can just add little amounts at a time. Like maybe it doesn't need a whole square of a chicken bouillon. Maybe it just needs a tiny little dash of something. You can add this in small increments, keep tasting it until you find that it's finally just over salty a little bit. I just sprinkle a little bit right into the cap and pour it in there. Mix it up, taste it one last time. That's perfect. That's where I want it. I can really taste all the vegetables of the sofrito in there. Now it's 
it's time to add your rice. And again, I don't measure things. It's a visual thing that will cue me that I've put enough rice to water as in ratios. And I'll teach you that trick too. All right. So I put my rice in another container so I can slowly pour it in here. What you're looking for is that when you add your rice, that there is about one inch of a layer of liquid above the top of the rice that you just poured in there. That is perfect. That's the perfect ratio of liquid to rice. Your rice should always come out perfectly, not too mushy, kind of al dente, so to speak. Another way to visualize it is if you take your index finger, that very first crease or fold from your knuckle, that's about one inch there, maybe a tiny bit more. It depends on your finger. But if you stick your finger in the liquid until you hit that top layer of rice, be careful, don't burn yourself. But if you just eyeball it and that liquid is going up to that first crease, that's about one inch right there. That's a good amount of liquid per rice. Your heat should be on low. We don't want to boil this rice. And then we're going to start adding enough rice here to get about that one inch of liquid remaining above it. And remember, we already have a lot of ingredients in here. So it's going to take up some of that space and very quickly bring that water level up. I added about four cups of rice. I am going to have to add a little bit more water, bring that liquid level up higher. And that's pretty good. I could see that layer of rice <laughs> underneath all of this liquid. It's kind of hard to tell with all of these ingredients and the color of the liquid, but it's in there. We don't want to add too much water or then you'll have mushy rice. Once you have your water and rice ratio the way that you like it, make sure again the temperature is down to low. It's all the way down on my low setting. All right, so we're going to put the lid on this and let this steam cook on a low for about 20, 25 minutes. It really depends on how much food you have on here. So I'll be checking it periodically and also mixing the rice. If it looks too dry to you or like it needs more water, I always have some extra water on the side here. It is much better to add extra water water into your rice than to have way too much in there to begin with. And it just makes your rice mushy. There's nothing you can do about that. All right. So it's been 45 minutes. I'm now going to remove the foil off from the chicken. So that way the skin starts getting crispy. And then we're going to put the chicken back in to bake for another, maybe 10 to 20 minutes. It just depends how long it takes for the skin to get a nice golden brown crispy color. And then we're going to just check up on our rice. As you can see, it has absorbed a lot of that liquid, but it still needs to cook for some more time. Make sure that you scrape everything off the sides of the pan so it doesn't get stuck and burned and then mix up everything really good. Then put the lid back on and allow it to continue to steam cook. All right. Our rice is done cooking. All of that liquid has been absorbed. It's a nice soft texture without being mushy. The chicken is looking good, nice and crispy. All right, so our dishes are done. We have our sausage and corn, rice and beans, and then our sofrito marinated baked chicken. The last thing is to top it off with some chopped cilantro. I like a lot of cilantro, so I put it on all of my food, basically. If you don't like cilantro, you could use culantro or papalo. If you don't like any of those and just leave it out, it's fine. I've also seen people top it off, especially the rice, with just some sliced sauteed onions and peppers. That works well, too. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's an inside look at how I use things from my garden to cook with and make lots of different recipes. So I hope this has inspired you to try making some sofrito and making either rice or chicken with it. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I just want to say this is not what I normally do. The primary focus of my channel is not, you know, cooking and recipes. It's about gardening and how to grow food. But I do like to make videos every now and then just showing you how I use the vegetables and things that I grow in my garden just to give you all ideas. But if you would like to learn more, about gardening, I invite you to check out the rest of my channel. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy this recipe.